Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Hi there, I'm Mary Eileen Williams at Feisty Side of 50 Radio, and this show is a celebration of baby boomer women who are embracing life as we grow older. No invisible shrinking violets here. We're an amazing and bodacious group of women who are revolutionizing and reinventing the spirit and style of aging. It goes without saying that I am super thrilled to introduce our guest today. She's known to millions as Carol Brady, but Florence Henderson is a woman of many accomplishments in addition to being the mom of TV's favorite blended family. Florence is a Broadway star who's been richly celebrated for her musical and acting talents. She paved the way for Barbara Walters by becoming an early Today Show quote-unquote girl. She also held the title of the first woman to guest host the Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson and much, much more. And better yet, her career is still red hot. Florence is now charming both viewers and guests as she hosts the Florence Henderson Show on RLTV. She was on the 2010 season of Dancing with the Stars, and she's recently written her autobiography, Life is Not a Stage, From Broadway Baby to a Lovely Lady and Beyond. Speaking of beyond, I could go on and on, but I think we'd better let Florence start speaking for herself. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Florence. You know I am thrilled to have you here. Well, Eileen, I'm thrilled to be here, and after that fabulous introduction, I don't think there's any more to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did cover some of the basics here, but I do want to start off by saying congratulations on the book Life is Not a Stage. It was one of those, I couldn't put it down, um, you were so open and honest. Tell us what led you to decide to write your autobiography. Well, you know, I've been asked over the years many times to... Uh, to write an autobiography, and I just never felt it was the right time. I figure if you're going to write an autobiography, you have to be honest. You know, I love reading them, and I know the minute I start whether this this person is going to be honest or they're going to gild the lily and make it, you know, seem like they were just such perfect human beings. And I didn't want to do that, and finally, I guess I reached the right age, and and I felt uh, that I could tell the truth about my life and be honest. Well, you certainly were honest, and I do want to let our listeners know there are plenty of juicy stories in this book, Lawrence, <laughs> and it's a, including that famous or quote-unquote infamous date with your TV son. But I would like uh, people, uh, our listeners, to buy the book and find out some of those juicy stories for themselves. I want to focus on some of the deeper aspects of your life because for women over 50, I think we can relate to a lot of this. Um, Do you mind talking a little bit about your childhood? Because it was difficult. You didn't have uh, any silver spoon in your mouth when you grew up. No, I was lucky to have any kind of spoon in my mouth. Uh, I grew up uh, the youngest of 10 children. My father didn't marry till he was almost 50. And then he had 10 children, and I was born when he was uh, approaching 70. And uh, it was a very uh, hard scrabble youth, you know, uh, very, very poor. And however, I look back uh, on that childhood, and I think, you know, it really taught me how to persevere. It taught me resilience. It taught me that you don't have to be a victim of your environment. Um, you know, my mother left when I was about 12, I guess, and my father had a drinking problem, and there's, there were so many things to deal with uh, for, you know, a young girl. But I did it, and I did it with optimism, um, as a child. It wasn't until later in life when I, you know, faced postpartum depression and things like that that, uh, you know, I had to look back and think those those events, those childhood events affected me more than I, I thought they did. Well, it's, it's quite remarkable, and I know you're very close to your older sister who was there for you a lot during that time. Absolutely. Uh, my sisters are you know, my angels, and the one next uh-huh. to me, uh, whom I call Babby, I dedicated the book uh, to her as well as my children. Uh, she is my best friend, and, and we went through so much together, and 
I remember when I was going to New York, I was barely 17, and I got sponsored there uh, to the American Academy. And I remember saying goodbye to my sister and crying. Mm. And, I'll come back for you. And she was crying. And, well, I did come back for her in a couple of years. And uh, so it all worked out. Well, and Florence, I, it, that is such a remarkable story. Here you had you came from very limited resources uh, right. to landing huge, huge roles on Broadway. To, I know we don't have time to go on and on, and this is a rich story in and of itself. But how did that happen? Well, in in high school, you know, I sang all my life. I don't ever remember not singing. And in high school. I was in the big choir, and, you know, I sang four-part Latin masses every Sunday, and uh, I got the lead in the high school musical. And my best friend in high school, she's still my best friend, Ruth Helen, and uh, her family was as wealthy as I was poor. And uh, so they came and they heard me, and she said, Florence has picked out a college in New York City, but she doesn't have any way to get there, and maybe we could help her. So after they heard me sing... Uh, they agreed to sponsor me, and uh, I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, and that's why I tell young people, you know, if you have a dream, if you're passionate, don't give up. Just just keep moving forward, and uh, and if you have the talent and you have the the drive, you know, and the ability to keep going when people say no, uh, you can achieve that dream. Well, and I, if you talk about keeping going and, and referring back to your childhood as giving you actually several gifts, <laughs> uh, one of them that you talk about a number of times in your book is riding a galloping horse. What does that mean? Well, when I was little, as I told you, we were very poor, and I had this dress that had a big hole in the front. You know, it's one of those ruffles with rickrack on the bottom. I don't oh, even know yes. if anybody knows what rickrack is anymore, but... Anyway, part of it was missing, and I said to my mother, please don't make me go to school in this. People will laugh at me. They'll make fun of me. And, and she said, yeah, you, you just think nothing of it. You just go on. And, I, you know, I cried and said, please, you know, the kids will make fun of me. And she said, just, just go. Think nothing of it. it. It'll never be noticed on a galloping horse. And that was always her expression. And I swear, uh, you know, I've been... I've thought of myself as a racehorse many times in life. Well, and I would say a winning racehorse. <laughs> I mean, my God. Well, you know, it's funny, Eileen, because when I'm backstage, before I go on, I pace. I, I'm, I honestly, I sometimes I smile because I am like a horse waiting to get out of the gate. I want to see what the audience is going to be like. I want to see, you know, how good it's going to be. It. it it's really amazing. So those phrases kind of stick with you. Well, and I, the other thing I wanted to mention about in the book, and then we're going to move on to more of the future aspects okay. of things or the present, but you, throughout your history, um, in the book, I know you, sh you share your flaws as well as your other aspects, but exactly. you, you seem to be such a generous and polite person. But the thing I admire is you came up at a time when it wasn't easy for women in general, and your business is hard anyway, but you were able to stand up for yourself. Well, you know what, maybe that comes from being the youngest of ten and having five brothers and four sisters and, how you know, you either stand up or you get trampled. And uh, I think that that helped me. But uh, also, you know, I had my first child when I was very young, and there was no women's lib. And I just wanted to work. I felt that I had a vocation. And... Uh, that a gift to share and that I could communicate well with people. And so it was very hard for me, you know, and I have four children, worked through all my pregnancies wow. at a time when women didn't go on television pregnant. But I did. I mean, I was on Johnny Carson in my ninth month. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I guess, I just said, I'd keep going, you know, just uh, forge ahead. And that's what I would do. I would say yes a lot. <laughs> well, and I know that's that's one of your tenets, one of your <laughs> yes, one of I'm, your ways to get through life. Well, you know, you were mentioning before about 
people over 50 and not being afraid to, to get older, you know, you can't help getting older. I mean, that's, that's the law of nature, but you don't have to get old. So uh, that is kind of a mantra of mine. You know, it's why I work out three times a week. It's why I still take singing lessons. Uh, you know, you you have to... You have to stay interested and you have to be interesting. You know, you just can't be a bore. Absolutely not. And I have to say, again, let's bring things to the future here. You have got the the present and the future, but you have a wonderful show that I I just adore. Whenever I catch it, I I've, I've got it actually. Uh, I have it on my DVR and all of that. But it's the Florence Henderson show on RLTV. And talk about staying interested and interesting. You have interviewed so many people who mean so much to the Boomers and beyond. Tell us some of your your favorite interviews, and tell us a bit more about that show. Well, you know, it, 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 a great privilege uh, to do that show because I <laughs> I get a chance to talk to the greats in our business who are still contributing. I, I would say one of my favorites, and because she's a wonderful friend, um, actually there there are several that were wonderful friends, but Judge Judy, uh, I just have great admiration for her for what she's achieved and how she's another one that just you know she keeps going she's extremely generous she's you know been so successful later in life and um and carol burnett you know who's gone through a lot and being with her when she lost her daughter um Mm. you know and to see her survive and thrive in life, uh, and I know how difficult that is. Or you talk to somebody like Carl Reiner, you know, who was married for so many years to Estelle and so happy, and, you know, life it gives you hard knocks and loss and all of that, but, you know, uh, you keep going. I think you pay the best tribute to those who have left you by continuing to live and and uh and enjoying life and sharing your life well, and I, I have seen actually every one of those interviews that you mentioned. They're all wonderful, and I think it's such a blessing as we grow older to see people again who we've been on, you know, who we've seen on TV oh. and various roles, but get to know them as a person as they're looking back through their through years of their life. Yeah, and for me, you know, I love interviewing people and, uh, you know, just to get out of the way and let them talk. I, I love Carl Reiner when... You know, he, he has this beautiful voice. And I said, Carl, you have, I mean, you really can sing opera. It's amazing. He said, yes, I can do all that. The only problem is I cannot sing on key. <laughs> you know? I bet you especially appreciated that one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, well, and getting back a little bit more to the personal, um, you did not always have an easy life, obviously. Uh, We were talking about your early life, but also, as many of us women over 50 can relate to, you had a series of events that kind of precipitated, I will say, a mini midlife crisis, but you went through a transformation that brought on a whole new, rich, fulfilling life for you. Will you tell us a little bit about how hypnotherapy and spirituality have changed your life, Florence? Absolutely. Um, I, you know, having worked all my life, and and you've read the book, so you know some of the traumas that have been in my life. Um, But I was, you know, I was in my 40s and my late 40s. I had just had a hysterectomy. My mother had passed away. I developed a terrible uh, case, which had been happening over, you know, a few years but of stage fright and a fear of flying, which are two things you don't want in our business. So I I tried everything to deal with this, and a friend of mine suggested uh, hypnotherapy. So, you know, like most people, you don't know exactly what hypnosis is, but anyway, I went, and I was helped so quickly, and I, I 
was so fascinated by hypnotherapy that I went to school and became a certified hypnotherapist. Mm-hmm. And um, and I I'd been married for several years, and I I was not happy. I you know, but I I was raised a very strict Catholic, and you know I had four children. I thought I can't possibly uh, ever change my life. But you know, I I got to the point uh, where I said, you know, I keep trying to change someone else, the only person I can really change is myself. And I really prayed hard about it, and I I uh, separated, my husband and I separated, and I we eventually divorced. It's very cliche, but we are still best friends uh-huh. and uh, have always been, I think, good parents. But um, my life changed in a very profound way. You know, I married Dr. John Kappas, a brilliant hypnotherapist. And I had almost 20 incredible years with him. And just having the courage to, to change my life. You know, I, one, another mantra of mine is it takes courage to be happy because so many of us, we're in a place where we think we can't get out of, you know, that, that we can't change for whatever reason. And it takes a lot of courage, so much courage to say, Yes, I I am not happy. I need to do something, um, and and that's when you you start to grow because if you don't change, you stagnate, and uh, you know it's all downhill from there. So uh, you know I uh, I'm really so grateful, and I think you know I have tremendous respect for my religion. But I've sort of, I've always been very spiritual. I've, that's been a major part of my life uh, as a child from the time I can remember. But I think that's become much deeper and uh, wider, uh, more accepting. And I think that word is important too, you know, accept. There are many things in life that we have to learn to accept. And... Uh, that we can't change, but a lot of things we can. So, um, yeah, that, that was, you know, if you told me many years ago that I would change my life like that, I would have said, nah, no, no way. So, but there you go. There you go. And I think as women of a, of a certain age, one of the gifts of menopause is a lot of times it forces us, or perimenopause, it, right. it, it forces us to make some of these changes that really then lead to a second adulthood, as one of my friends, Suzanne Braun Levine, calls it. Or a uh, second childhood. <laughs> a second childhood, absolutely. <laughs> but yes, when we get a, a fresh start and, and, you know, real new beginnings. Absolutely. And you know what? It's never too late. It's never too late to change your life. It's never too late to be happy. And, uh, you know, life is to be lived and enjoyed, and that's that's what I try to do. Well, Florence, I, I promise I'd leave it to about 20 minutes because I know you have a lot of things on your schedule. This has been wonderful. I didn't get to cover nearly what I'd like to, and maybe in a few months down the line, if I could twist your arm to come back on, I would love that. Eileen, I would love it. You're a wonderful interviewer, and any time I I will be back. I'm leaving the country again. I just got back from Australia, but I'm leaving the country again soon. But uh, absolutely, you just call me. I'll I'll be there. Well, thank you so much. Before you, I let you off the hook here, though. You do have an official website, so please let people know where they can find you on the web. Okay, it is Flow Home F L O. H O M E flowhome dot com and I answer everything. I know you do. You answered me and I so appreciate it. Any final thoughts you'd like to leave with our listeners? I would just say, you know, keep a cool head and a warm heart. And that I will take to the bank. Thank you, Florence <laughs> yeah, Anderson. You. And your thank you.
And thank you for sharing your amazing and inspirational life with us. It was obviously an honor and a thrill for me to get to speak with you. And for all you listeners out there, I believe it's time we boomers take pride in all of our accomplishments, our glorious maturity, and take a cue from Florence Henderson to make our own lives rich, rewarding, and filled with the blessings of friends and family. After all, as she says, life is not a stage, and we've earned this very special time in our lives. So go out there and show the world just how feisty, fabulous, and Florence-like a woman over 50 can be. This is Mary Eileen Williams at Feisty Side of 50 Radio saying catch you next time. Bye-bye. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather.